All right, so good evening, everyone, and welcome to our ICON emergency conference call, family. This is a leadership call, and this is for all of those persons who want to peel off the layers and go higher to, to do bigger things, you know, jump, you know, you know, climb higher heights jump higher hurdles, move around the track faster. But we're going to get into the mind tonight, guys, as I bring forth our um, special speaker. We're going to get into um, the mind, you know, what we, what we think, what we, what we hear uh, ourselves say, how we feel. We want to we wanna understand who we are so that we know how to, be, to move beyond where that place is in our life. So as I bring the speaker forward, I'm, I'm challenging each of you guys to make sure, let me make sure that the lines are muted each of you guys to make sure uh, make sure that you have a pen and pad because it's going to be a lot of information coming your way tonight. So stay tuned as I introduce uh, our speaker, Dr. Pruitt. This is going to be mind blowing. Manifestation requires the right environment. You can take a seat and put it on the kitchen table. We've been there for 10 years, 20 years. Years. Please enter your access code followed by the pound key. Please wait. Please enter the reference number followed by the pound key. And please wait while we prepare your files. Press 6 to fast forward for one minute. Press 4 to rewind for one minute. Press five to pause or resume. Well, good morning, good morning, and good afternoon for some folks. This is Deborah Friday, May 4th. So let me introduce you to all those kind words. Deborah Webster, we certainly do appreciate each and everything that you give. And you give sometimes, and people don't even know what you're giving and how you're serving. I want you to know that we appreciate you. And that's just not from our she and I. That's from the entire team as a body. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and good afternoon to some. I want to welcome all of you to the Jet Set Legends Leadership Training Call. We do this call every single Saturday. And I certainly trust that you've got your designated notebook. We have some very important things we're going to be talking about today. But I first want to just welcome all the champions that have joined us on the line today. I truly believe leaders are special people. If you join us on the line today, you are that. You are a champion. You've heard me say it before. I'm going to say it again. If you want to learn law, for the law school, if you want to learn medicine, for the medical school, but if you want to learn leadership, leadership in this particular industry of networking that we're involved in, this is a place that you come every single Saturday. Folks, we are in a very special moment right now, and we are in a 90-day blitz. Project 5000, we've announced it to the world. We brought on the CEO of the company, the chief visionary officer of the company. We let it be known. We plan our flag. This is what we're about to do. We're about to get down for our crown. We're not afraid to get paid. We're here to make a tremendous difference in the lives of people, and we're going to do it collectively, one block on to another. Yes, we're in a 90-day blitz where we have specifically set aside a definite goal. We're going to be focusing all of our energy. We're going to be focusing our willpower, all of our efforts for that specific goal. You know, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that we plan our flag. That Judy and Gumby have said they're going to bring on 500 brand new team members over the next 90 days. We're going to know our 100 new team members. Shavette Daniel, 500 new team members. Deborah Webster, 500 new team members. Daryl Bryant, 200 new team members. John and Chantel Murphy, one. Thousand new team members, and they are on their way. Tina Martin, 200 new team members. Scott Butler, 200 new team members. Maria Robinson, 60. Cheryl Washington, 300. Pauline Brown Webster, 170. Ray Robinson, 2,000 new team members. Wade on table, you're on your way. Kelly Jefferson, 500 new team members. Diana Gonzalez, 1,500 new team members. Sharonica Jack, 500. Eric Quarterman, 200. Edmund Carlos, 2,000 new team members. Lily Harden, 200 new team members. Jillian Wilson, 500 new team members. Bastion, 300. B. Petty, 500. Roland Torres, 2,000 new team members. Josh, 300 new team members. Folks, the list goes on and on. We've written it down. We've made it plain. We have a specific time set that we will accomplish this goal. 
the, the numbers there, the time effect. And, you know, I just want to talk today about something very special. And I've been talking to a few leaders, and a few of the leaders have been saying to me, man, I've got a strong team, I've got some willing people, but I don't quite know why they're not working up to their full potential. I know they want it. I know they want it bad. And I've said, I've had this conversation with many leaders talking about members on their team. And it just made me think, and I began to meditate on this. I began to pray and think about this. You know, I do a lot of reading. A lot of reading we do right now. Of course, I'm reading Thinking Grow Rich during this 90-Day Bliss. I'm reading that book. I'm also reading Gina, CEO. I'm also reading the new Joe Wilson book. I got so many things I'm reading. I have so many things I'm listening to. And I once heard something from Dr. Miles and that really stuck with me about being a leader. And, you know, all this is just going through my mind, going through my spirit. And I thought it would be important today to do a call on how to become an awesome leader and, and, and how to become an awesome leader. I want to talk about some of the attributes, the attitudes for leadership development because that is what's going to set you apart from the rest of the pack. See, I really believe that leaders are very, very unique, special people. See, it's their thinking that makes them different. That's what sets leaders apart. They think different from followers. You see, most leaders, almost everyone I know, me included, at one point used to be a follower. All of us. All of us. And if you want to be an awesome leader, you have to develop certain types of thinking and certain types of perceptions. We're talking about perceptions and thinking to change the way you see yourself, change the way you see the world. And I call this the spirit of leadership. Now, I want you just to, to take as many notes as you possibly can. And for some of you who are listening to this on the playback right now, because I'm going to demand that all of you listen to this call over and over again. Because I really want to give you a slice, an inkling, a vision of what you are developing into an awesome leader. We're going to talk a little bit about the spirit of leadership. You know, I read a lot of books in every single day to read the Bible. And in reading the Bible, there are only two animals on the planet that the Creator identifies Himself with. Now, I want you to think about that statement. There are only two animals on the entire planet that God himself identifies himself with. One is the eagle, and the other is the lion. Now, to be the leader of the universe, we want to be a leader. Now, to be the leader of the universe, we know what that is. And we all want to be leaders, and I think we should understand the nature of these two animals. Both of these two animals are the kings of their domain. They came from the king of the bird kingdom and things that fly. The, the lion is the king of the animal kingdom, king of the jungle. Now, the lion has the spirit of leadership. Now, when I say spirit, I want you to think to yourself that refers to that attitude. The lion has the spirit of leadership. And spirit refers to its attitude. The leader that has an attitude that is different from others, that's what you are developing right now. That's what this whole call is about. You made your goal, you put it out there, you got a time plan specific to it. So let's try to understand the habits and, and the characteristics that this incredible animal has. See, the lion exhibits that kind of attitude, that kind of leadership. That's why it's the king of the jungle. But I want you to take note. The lion is not the tallest in the jungle. Mm -mm. The lion is not the largest animal in the jungle. Nope. The lion is not the heaviest, the most mighty, the most powerful animal in the jungle. Uh -uh. The lion is definitely not the smartest animal in the jungle. And yet, the lion is the king. Now, you don't need to be the tallest, the smartest, the biggest, the strongest. Come on, let's just say that the lion is not as tall as a giraffe. The lion is not as heavy or strong as a hippo. 
or the elephant or the rhinoceros, the lion is not as smart as even a coyote or a snake. Yet when the lion shows up, every single one of those I just mentioned, they all run. You see, the lion to me cancels out any excuse anyone could have about why you can't be a good leader. It's not about how tall you are, how educated you are, how much money you got, what kind of skills you got, what kind of talents you have. None of that matters. It's your mindset. It's how you think, your attitude. So what makes the lion so unique? I want you to think about this statement, folks. An army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. Let me repeat that again. An army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep because of the leadership. See, that leadership can transform cowards into violent warriors, champions. Why would the lion be the king of the jungle if he's not the smartest, he's not the largest, he's not the mightiest, he's not the strongest? Yet, he walks into a situation and runs things. Why is that? One word, attitude. The lion has a different attitude that makes every other animal afraid of. Now, we're not talking about leading by fear, but it does take respect to be a leader. See, the elephant respects the lion. The giraffe respects the lion. You see what I'm saying? Uh, the rhino respects the lion. In the jungle, fear equals respect. The hippo respects the lion. What makes these powerful animals respect a smaller cat? It's attitude. When the lion sees the elephant, he thinks one word. Lunch. It was lunch time. <laughs> now, think about this. The lion is stronger, more powerful than, I'm sorry, the elephant is stronger, more powerful than the lion. One stomp could crush the lion. Yet the lion only sees lunch. I can eat that. That looks delicious. The difference is the way the lion thinks. The elephant thinks, I could be lunch. Even though it's bigger, even though it's more powerful, even though it's stronger, mightier, his authority and his size, because of the way he thinks, he becomes a victim. Because of the way he thinks. See, it doesn't matter about your size, your education, your talent, or your mind. No, none of that matters. It doesn't matter where you were born, how your mama raised you. How you it, none of that matters. It, it doesn't matter. How you did in school does not matter. What you do for a living right now does not matter. It's your mindset, your attitude that keeps people small. Even if you have little education, little money, little assets, little know-how, it's your mindset that makes you a leader. The difference between a leader and a follower is attitude. Because your attitude stretches the leader beyond its limitations. Did you hear what I said? It's the leader's attitude that stretches him beyond his limitations. It's the thinking of a person that makes them see themselves and see the world differently. That's a leader. I want you to write this down. Attitude is a product of belief. You cannot have attitude beyond your belief. The lion's a king because of what it believes about himself, how he sees the jungle, how he sees the world, what he believes the giraffe to be, what he believes the elephant, the gazelle, what he believes them to be is lunch. Because of how he thinks, because of his attitude, even though it's smaller, even though it's a cat, even though it doesn't have all the stuff that other ones have, the lion has a different attitude. He controls the entire situation because of what he believes. Remember, attitude is a product of belief. 
from Matthew and Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh inside of us. The power that worketh inside of us. It's about belief. It's about your attitude. It's about your mindset. You've heard me say to build a business, you've got to build it three ways, build it in your mind, build it on paper, build it out in the field. Most people just thinking about building it out in the field. You've heard me talk about offense wins games, but defense wins championships. The defense is defending against certain things that you put into your mind. It's all about my, let me tell you something. This whole thing we're doing is a thinking contest. You don't hear me not do you? This whole thing we're doing is a thinking contest. Do you think we can really put in 500 people, Judy and Gumby? Do you think really, Evan and Carlos, you can put in 2,000 people? Do you really think when we are you going to put in 60? Get up my to go through the list here. Do you think, do you believe your attitude is a product of your belief? I just want to say, I, I, I personally went from first-time network marketer to millionaire. And I remember we were doing our meetings and people were driving past other proven leaders leading to get to our meeting. But my parents had always told me, you can have what you want. You can be anything you want. You can do anything you want. You can be anything, son. That became my belief system. I look at Marcia. Marcia Pruitt went from her high school dance workshop team in Detroit, Michigan, a task to high met her note to a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader at the age of 19 years old because of her belief system. I remember when she first called me, uh, I was in Dallas, and Marcia called me from Detroit, and she said, I'm coming to Dallas to try out for the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, and I'm going to make it. Belief. 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 So if you want to rise up and go beyond where you are right now, you've got to change your belief system. You've got to change the way you're thinking about this whole thing. You've got to develop that attitude that you can't lose, you won't lose, you don't know nothing but winning. You've got to develop an attitude that when challenges come your way, you look at them as much. It's much time. I'm about to get this. That's got to be your attitude if you want to achieve the goals that you have set aside for yourself. I didn't create the goal. You created the goal because there's something deep inside of you that wants to hit that goal. You just got to believe. You got to have that attitude. Then when something comes up, something ain't working out right, oh, it's worth time. It's the secret to everyone rising is a discovery that you control your belief system. You control your belief system. Don't nobody control what goes on between your ears but you. Once you discover that, then the leader is born. The leader inside of you is born. Your life is what you think it should be. Your environment is what you think it should be. You are now what you thought you should be, and now it's time for you to focus on what you think it should be. If you want to change that, change that. If you want to change those things you see around you, change what you think it should be. That's how a leader's born. No amount of training and skills or management methods can ever substitute for the right attitude. Your leadership development is controlled by your attitude. I'm going to give you these three things. I want you to think about this. Your perception of who you are, that's your belief system. Why do you think you exist? That's your purpose to lead. Your sense of significance, that is who you are, why your mission is important. Let me repeat that. Number one, your perception of who you are, that is your belief system. 
Number two, why do you think you exist? What is your purpose to believe? And number three, your sense of significance, who you are. Most of us have a perception of what others think of us instead of what we think about ourselves. I want you to hear that. I want that to vibrate, uh, vibrate in your spirit. Most of us conduct ourselves according to other people's perception of us instead of what we think. If you don't discover your purpose to lead, you will always have a job you will always build somebody else's dream, and then they'll bury you with an average tombstone and an average grave. If you don't discover your purpose to lead, you got to discover that you are important. you got to discover that you are important to the human race, to the world, to the universe. What you bring to the table is significant. It is so special. It is mighty. You were born to win, but many of us are conditioned to lose. Born to win a condition to behave according to what others think. Just another social security number. Just a, 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 another worker in the system. That ain't true. Don't you buy that. Don't you fall for that. You were born to do something special, something significant. You were born with a purpose specific purpose to achieve in this world, in this reality. You are very, very special from head to toe. You have to get to the point where you believe that. Where you believe it and you know it to be true. It doesn't matter about what anybody else thinks. It only matters about who's staring back at you in the mirror in the morning. Who's staring back at you in the mirror at night. That's all that matters. And people are clapping and saying, wow, look at her. Look what she did. Isn't that awesome? She gets up and we don't have it. But they don't know about all those times in the morning, those times in the evening. They don't know about you on your knees praying for strength. They don't know about all the books that you're reading instead of watching the NBA playoffs and watching the golf and watching uh, whatever's on TV. They don't know about what you're putting into your mind, how you're creating and shaping your beliefs, how you're adding to how you think. You were born with the ability to be a leader, but it must match up with your belief system. Remember the elephant? He believes he's lunch. It doesn't matter how strong he is. It doesn't matter how jolly and massive he is. He sees himself as lunch because that's what he believes. That's his belief system. Your total capacity to lead is buried under your lack of belief that you can your total capacity to lead is buried under your lack of belief that you can. You're afraid to step out there. You're afraid to go try this. You're afraid to get 30 exposures a day. You're afraid to give it your all. You better put something in your mind. You better start reading something. You better quit being entertained by what's in that small box. Oh, yeah. We're going to hit our goal with or without you. But if you could just join us and you'll just follow in to what we're talking about, if you would just latch on and start to believe that you can do what you say you can do, belief is so powerful. It can make an elephant act like a sheep in the presence of the lion. You know, uh, when people who are insecure, when people or someone who's confident, Sometimes they call it arrogance. You know what I mean? But when you have discovered who you are, you can't help but be confident. When you discover who you are, when you discover what you can do, you discover that you got talents and gifts that only God's giving you, you don't have to try to be confident. Confidence is a part of the belief. The lion walks around with this level of belief. His attitude, you have that. What you believe about yourself determines what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is how you behave. When you behave bold and confident and fearless, that's because you discover something about yourself and something about life that has changed 
perception of you and change your perception of the world. It's all about mindset, baby. It's all about your mentality. It's all about how you think. First things, your attitude got to be right. Combine that with the right attributes, the gifts that you were born with, the right attitude, the education and, and training that you got about those gifts. That's why you must read and take notes and study these notes. You hear me? Read, take notes, study these notes. Then your altitude begins to change the level of associations you're in. The people you hang around, leaders choose their friends based on their destination. You don't hear me. I'm trying to tell you what I know, what I know. One special thing about leadership that I know that every one of you has inside of you right now is you have to take charge of your life. You have to come to the point where you're going to decide how this story is going to play out. You're going to decide how your personal life plays out over the next 90 days. Whether you're going to wear a skirt and be a cheerleader or whether you're going to be out there in the field making it happen because you believe you can. And if you don't have that belief, my suggestion is you start cultivating it. You start putting something in your mind. You start getting on your knees and praying and asking for help that you don't have. You do whatever it takes to get what you got to get to change your belief, to change your attitude, to change your thinking, to become who you really are. One thing I know about leadership is that you have to take charge of your life. Like the eagle. Uh, the eagle is the other animal that we talked about. I'm not going to speak about it a whole lot on this particular call, but like the eagle, the other animal that we were talking about earlier, the eagle can fly five miles straight up in the sky. Five miles straight up. I mean, this is where jet planes fly. When an eagle meets another eagle at top flight, it must be another eagle. It never meets any other bird. Because only eagles can fly that high. So consider this. If you keep running around with pigeons and ducks, you're flying too low. If you're plugged into this type of mentorship, this type of coaching right now, then you're an eagle. Why would you even be here? You know how many of these messages and, and text messages and emails we all send out to people you get on this call today? You know how many people actually showed up to get this lesson today? These are people that want to fly. I didn't remember who you are and whose you are. You know what I mean when I say pigeons and ducks? That's right. You're an eagle. That's why you're doing this business in the first place. That's why you're writing all this stuff down. That's why you're going to trends. That's why you go back and listen to this playback again and again and again. And I know people say, well, why, are you, why, why, why are you doing that business? Why, why are you getting on that coaching call? You, you, you can't teach you nothing. All the people saying that they're pigeons, ducks, they're chickens. The chickens don't fly when they're scared. People criticize when they have time to be critical. Leaders are too busy to be critical. We're too busy getting it done. We're too busy getting down for our crown. We're too busy succeeding. We ain't got time to talk about what somebody else ain't doing, what somebody else is doing. It's not ability. It's mentality that makes the leader. Do you hear me? It's the mentality that makes the leader. It's what the leader thinks. I've seen people at the top of this networking game don't have the education I've got. Used to be uh, uh, working at grocery stores and, 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 and waiters. And it does, none of that matters. Only thing that matters is you as a grown adult, how you choose to believe, how you choose to think, how you choose to behave, what you choose to read, what you choose to listen to, what you choose to study. So here it goes. Oh, he got the size. He got the power. He got the might. The rhino. Oh, he has the size. He got the power. He has the might. He has the ability. But the lion got a different mentality. 
So he eats those people for lunch. He eats the hippo. He eats the, the, the lion. He eats them for lunch because of his mentality. What you think is more important than what you do. Work on that attitude. Work on that belief. Now, I'm going to tell you something I know that's 100% true. The hidden in every follower is a leader trapped in every single follower is a leader in there waiting to emerge. Therefore, my goal is to release the hidden leader inside of you. That's what this call is about. Now, I got to tell you this. The greatest example of leadership is a production of other leaders. True leadership does not maintain followers. True leadership does not maintain followers. It produces other leaders, not followers. Every single call, every single conversation is trained to lead from the beginning. The capacity to lead is in all of us. It's in everyone. It's in every human being born. The capacity is in there. It's going to match up with the mentality. I want you to think about this. Like a tree, okay? Imagine a tree that's trapped inside of a seed. Every single one of you is like a seed sent here to this planet to develop into a tree to solve. And, and from that tree that you develop into, you're going to produce some fruit for the world. That's why you were born. Deep inside of you is a person no one even knows yet. That leader inside of you, we haven't met him yet, Jillian. The leader inside of you, John Murphy, it's ready to step out, Tina Martin. Mr. Ramison, I'm telling you, there is a tree inside of you that is ready to bloom. Yeah, it's got some bones on already, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Leadership manifestation requires the right environment. You can take a seat and put it on the kitchen table. We've been there for 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. And you're never going to come out of it sitting on the kitchen table. But you take that same seed, you put it in the right environment, put it in the right soil, with a little bit of water, and here comes the future. <laughs> here comes the tree, here comes the forest. See, when you're on your 40 day mental fast and you're reading books and you're listening to CDs and you're plugged into these trainings, you're feeding your seed. You are in the right environment when you're doing that. When you cut off the television and you quit listening to the radio's music for 40 days and you start listening to something empowering, you start listening to the magic of thinking big by Dr. Schwartz. You start listening to Think and Grow Rich. You start listening to uh, those things. You start reading the book Think and Grow Rich. You're going to get around and stay around the right people, people who are going somewhere. But I want to warn you, every one of you, beware, beware, beware. There's people who ain't going nowhere. They can't wait for you to go there with them. You hear me? There's people who ain't going nowhere. I said ain't going nowhere. They can't wait for you to go there with people who ain't doing nothing. They want you to go do nothing with them. You got to understand the difference. Now, there's two concepts here that I want to talk about. One is the leadership spirit. One is the spirit of leadership. Now, the leadership spirit is what we were born with. It's just trapped inside of each of you. But with the right mindset, because we know you're born to win, and if you don't watch out, society will condition yourself to lose, but you've got to separate yourself from the pack. We know that 95% of people die broke, so you don't want to follow the pack that's over there going that way. You've got to identify yourself separate with a separate attitude, with a separate belief system of what you're going to do, what you're going to accomplish, who you're going to be. You must separate yourself from the pack. Because the pack is going to die broke. Society wants you to conform, wants you to be same, the same as everybody else. Walk like this, drive like this. Trained, being trained and conditioned to limit yourself. 
society is designed so that you'll never become a leader. But sometimes you got to break away from the traditional norm. Now, here's something that's funny. I want you to think about this. Let's say this a warning. Isn't it funny that once you decide to become a leader, everybody else in the world says, where are you going? Why are you going to go do that? Why don't you sit here and be nothing with us? Huh? When we decide to be extraordinary, no, stay here and be regular and ordinary with me. But when you break away from the pack and you start leading, you have to design your own course. That's what a leader is. It's being bold. It's taking risks. Making a commitment to charge your own course. You've got to believe it. So you just have to break through certain barriers. When you're out there on your own and you're getting it done, all of a sudden you don't care what nobody say about you because you got these goals, see? And you've been doing your affirmations, see? And you've been affirming. You've been visualizing. You've already seen what's going to happen before it happens. You can feel the feeling of already owning it. You're walking around right now with that confidence. Knowing that 5,000 people will come to the gym in 90 days. Who will set up to the plate? I don't know who. Maybe I haven't even recruited it yet. But I know it's going to get done. I know it's going to get done. Just stay here. Keep your mouth shut. Take what's given to you. Be afraid to take chances. Just, just play it safe. Why are you going to get out there and make waves? Can't you just stay here and live here forever? Can't you just keep your mouth shut and, and take what's given to you? This is your life. This ain't their life. This is your life. The elephant thief is a meal for a child. Having a leadership spirit means you are naturally created to lead, but the mentality and the mindset is what wakes up that leader, oxidates it. The spirit of leadership refers to attitudes and mentality and a mindset the key to all great leaders. It's often revealed in crisis situations when you're forced to step up. See, all of us have been in those situations where some devastating has happened. You don't know where to turn to. You don't know what you're going to do. I can't believe I found myself in this situation. Oh, my God. It's at that moment that something inside of you wakes up. It kicks in. So sometimes people have to get put out of their house. They got to lose their heart. They got to have something devastating to happen to them. Or they can just make a decision that it's time to leave. It's a, a decision that it's time to step up. But oftentimes, it's in those crisis situations when you discover what you're made of. The spirit of leadership is the perception of yourself and the perception of the world. The spirit of leadership is your conviction that you regulate your thoughts. Can't nobody control what you think but you. The spirit of leadership it is your belief system that controls your behavior. The spirit of leadership is your mentality, your capacity, that you can build your belief. Nurture the right attitude. Associate with the right people. Nurture the right attitude means to feed yourself the right information. Watch the right things. Listen to the right things. Read the right things. Huh? You become what you think. So to change your life, you must change your mind. That ought to be on the back of a bumper or a t-shirt or something. The heart of leadership. It's in how a person thinks. How a person thinks. How you think. What you think about yourself. True leadership is inherent in the human spirit. You must believe that first of all, every human has the capacity to be a true leader. If they die as a follower, I'm sorry, to die as a follower is a choice. Every human being has the capacity to be a great leader. True leadership cannot be taught. It must be discovered. You better discover the leader in you. You gotta pour into your mind, step out there and discover what you can do. You can't discover 
second base or one foot on first. Two leadership is serving your gift to the world. We all have gifts, no exceptions. We were all taught to be employed. Not deployed, but employed. Having a job versus having a business. Two leadership is self-manifestation. It's trapped inside of you right now. But you're so great. And it's so amazing. And it's burning to get out of you. It's no wonder chapter one of Think and Grow Rich is a burning desire. The first ingredient to riches. Don't let your past hold you back from stepping out and stepping up. Don't let your past hold you back from stepping out and stepping up. Don't let your past hold you back from stepping out and stepping up. Every leader in the beginning don't really know what they're doing. And I can speak to that, me included. All we have is an idea, a vision, something we want to make happen. We do that, we go for it. We step up and we make it happen. We make it happen. Leadership demands you got to take some risks. You got to get out there and expose yourself. Leadership is self exposure. When you start to lead, you will expose yourself. You can't hide and lead at the same time. Because you're in front of the room, you're doing the call, you're doing the presentation, you're speaking, you're out there. You can't hide, get it done. So I want to talk for a moment to that leader inside of you. Can we meet you? Will you introduce yourself to us? Will you step out? Can we meet you before you die? Not the one that society has produced. Not that you. Not the you that your culture made. Not that you. The one that's inside of you, your true self. What you can do, what you're capable of doing with the right attitude. You got to know, number one, ask to answer these questions to yourself. Number one, who am I? Number two, where am I from? Number three, why am I here? Number four, where am I going? Number five, what can I do? So you ask yourself, who am I? Now you're trying to discover something about yourself. When you say, where am I from? I I don't mean I'm from Detroit. That's not what I mean. Where am I from? You're, You're from a spirit. You're from greatness. You're from perfection. Why am I here? That's talking about your purpose. Where am I going? Now you're focusing on your destiny, creating it. What can I do? Now you're trying to tap into your potential. True leadership is attitude, y'all. And we're all from heaven. We're all from spirit. So you heard me say the first chapter in Think and Grow Rich, desire, the turning point of all achievement. Desire, the first step to riches, desire, a burning desire. And with that being said, I'm going to bring on Dr. Marcia Pruitt. Marcia, if you would, we're in a 90-day blitz. We're meeting together collectively as a team, a jet set legend, leadership team. We've all got our goals. We're in a mindset of blitzing. And we're reading Think and Grow Rich, Marcia. And we're focused on chapter one. I want to pass the call over to you. Thank you so much, James. I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, just after James has finished that training there, don't you all feel like exhaling for a minute? Just like, (sighs) okay, everybody. So we're going to talk about Think and Grow Rich. So those of you that are new to the call, we are reading Think and Grow Rich uh, every week, and we're just having a little bit of discussion about it on a weekly basis. So we're just at the beginning, so you have time enough to go ahead and grab the book. Whether you want to get it online, or you can just read it online, or you want to order the actual book from Amazon, we have the talks about the introduction. That's chapter one. Chapter two is about desire. Desire is the turning point of all achievement. And even though in this in this uh, book, you know, they talk a lot about desiring money, 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 money. I want everyone to know that money is just a figure. Uh, this these processes, these procedures will work for any definite goal, okay? So we just don't get caught up on the whole money idea. But it's really all about knowing knowing what you want. 
knowing what you want. Now, that's the first principle of success. Do you even know what you want to the point where you can define it and write it down? That's what this chapter is talking about. It's talking about turning your desire into an obsession. Into an obsession. That's going to take persistence. It's going to take insistence that it will happen. You're going to make it happen. He talks about having a plan to acquire the riches. You're going to have some goals. You're going to back those goals with your plans. And now listen. This is interesting. With a persistence that does not recognize failure, so the way I like to say it is, with a persistence that only recognizes success. So you really don't recognize no. When people tell you no, when people give you negatives. That's the type of thing that you are guarding against, such that when people tell you no, it's the type of thing you don't recognize. It's just like flows off your back. He's just like, okay, whatever. You just keep it on moving. It's not going to affect you where you're like, oh, depressed and all. This is the type of mind exercise. You're mentally strong. And this is the, the steps that we're taking in this very first chapter, desire. He goes on to talk about the six steps, six definite steps practical steps to follow in order to transform your desire for the riches into the riches themselves. So you actually have the riches in your hand. How do you go from wanting it to actually having it in your hand? Now, in this chapter, chapter two in desire, he breaks down the six definite practical steps to follow. And as you remember last week, as we were talking about the Think and Grow Rich book, <laughs> And people think it's more of a reading exercise, and I told you it really is a doing exercise. And every chapter is going to require you to do some things. Mostly it's just thinking. The name of the book is Think and Grow Rich. So it's just thinking. This is going to require you to think and write and have a moment of just thinking and crystallizing your plan. It's for your own good. It's not going to be any hard labor. Or, you know, it's not going to require any sacrifice. But you do need to follow those six steps. You do need to grab the book and not only read the chapter, but also do the actual exercise. You're at the end of those uh, six steps. You're going to have something that will then you can take then to the next chapter as we begin to build on the next chapter. We're going to be talking about faith. Okay, so this is just building the bond principle, but you got to do the first things first. And I got to tell you, like I said last week, you got to get this chapter done and the thinking done and the exercises, the six practical definite steps. You got to get all that stuff done and hit your goals. So you've got to find that time, that time. That's why we've got the TV turned off. That's why we've got the radio turned off. Because in those times, this is what you're doing. You're crystallizing your plan. This is the part that uh, the mental work that really, really, it's so much, it's so much a part of what you're doing. Uh, I wish I could, um, oh, I wish I could tell you how important it is. It's just so important that you get all of these things taken care of, that you get an idea of what your designer is, what your plan is. And I want you guys to think about something. <laughs> um, James has given us um, his six definite practical steps. I don't know if you guys have realized that but when he talks about having the 5,000 new business partners in by a certain date, so a lot of people is focused on what's your plan. He's back to your plan. Together every day, he's sending out a text message telling everybody the success that we're having. He's not recognizing any failure. He's actually doing the steps. So what I want you guys to do is back it all, back it up. Let's all do it together. You guys do your part. We'll all do our part. We'll all work together. This is just chapter two. Chapter two is desire. Desire, so let's back it up with our plan. Six types of steps. I can't wait to talk to you next time when we talk about faith. Thanks so much, James. Back to you. Dr. Marcia, I appreciate that. Marcia, do you remember when you called me? When you were 19 years old, you said, I'm coming to Dallas to try out for the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, and I'm going to make it. And I said, oh, you are. You said, yep, I'm going to make it. 
And I want everyone to know, when she called me and told me that, she didn't have nowhere to live when she made it. She didn't know what she was going to do when she made it. She didn't know where she was going to work once she made it. But the one thing she knew is, I'm going to make it. It's that kind of belief, that kind of desire, that kind of determination that you already have in you if you're just for me. So she talked about six specific steps to create a definite, practical goal. Now, we didn't give everybody a the book. It's free online. Who's actually reading it? Who's actually doing the 40-day mental fast? Who's Please enter your ad. Well, champions, now tell me your thoughts. What are your thoughts about that training? It's an amazing training, family, uh, for me, but I would love to hear from you guys. Like, what were your thoughts about mindset, about how you think, about what you believe, about having those affirmations? So here is, let's see, we've got a comment in the chat. Let's see what we've got. <clears throat> Wanda, Rhonda says, wow, 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 absolutely. Legacy definitely found some value. So family, I want each of us to, fa fantastic, Rhonda believes everything. I want each of us to download the book. So download the book, guys, Think and Grow Rich. That Download that book, So because we as a team, we're going to start to read it. I have it in paperback. Andrea said it's the truth, absolutely. Because one of the things that we're going to focus on on our conference calls is we're going to start talking a lot about um, not, there's going to be skill set training, but then there also has to be leadership internally, you know, growing training as well. And so we're going to be going in that general direction. But after I heard the training guys, I, ha I got through like 40 minutes of it. And I think it's 49 minutes long. And I was like, we're training on that tonight. And that's when you guys got that text because guys, I feel like if it can empower each and one, every one of us to do what we're going to do. Um, then everybody can win. So Annette, thank you. So here's what I'm looking for from the team builders. Several things I'm looking for for the team builders. We are gonna go on a 90 day blitz. Now our 90 day blitz, we called it a blitz, but we didn't really have a structure. And so on um, this weekend, we're actually gonna get on a, tr um, maybe before that, maybe tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna get on a training call guys, where we're gonna, we're gonna speak, thank you. Uh, we're going to speak to the, a system that we're putting in place that will grow your number. So we'll do that on tomorrow. Um, but for my team builders, this is what I need to know, okay? If we talk about um, a 90-day blitz, which puts us, today is the 21st, puts us October, November, December 21st. So right before the end of the year, right? Right before the holiday. I need to hear from, I need each of you individually as team builders to text to me because our project is Mission 1000. Our project is Mission 1000, okay? So this is where we are, Mission 1000. So I want to know from you what you feel like you and your team can get done. So if you're a team builder and above, what you and your team can get done in the next 90 days. So. You have, to, you have to pick a goal that is number one. Tomorrow night, um, Andrea, let's do eight o'clock tomorrow, tomorrow night. Um, so so for, for the team builders, like what, number one, you know what your goal is. Like you have your goal. <clears throat> and if your goal is 100 persons, well, you want to set your goal beyond the, the 100. Like if your goal is to, to do the $10,000 bonus, well, you don't want to just set your goal for where where you can hit, you know, unless you feel like, okay, that goal may, you know, if, if it's too much for you in 90 days. Um, nice. Make sure somebody is unmuted. Hold on, guys. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> if each of you guys could text me what your independent goal number is. Now, everybody doesn't have to be the same. So that's why I'm not asking you to tell me now what you're independently texting. How many people do you commit to grind towards onboarding in your entire organization over the course of the next 90 days? 
Now, for those of you who text me, I, I'm gonna need we're gonna I'm gonna need have you go into your back office so I can know what your numbers are and I can have an idea of um, where for you need to focus your attention because you have to know. Am I need to focus on personal recruiting? Am I should I be down in my downline? Um, things of that nature. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, so text me that goal because uh, you know I I'll, the team is gonna do a thousand in the next ninety days. We are going to show with the system that we're going to imp put in place just how powerful this platform is, but the commitment has to start with the leadership. So, um, so outside of um, my team builder organization, outside of my team builder organization, I, I would say, well, now everybody's in my team builder organization. Almost everybody's in my team at the organization. So, but I would say I would commit to 200 and well, 300 in the next 90 days outside of those of you who are team builders. So, this is my number outside. If you're a team builder, I'm not counting anybody in your team builder group. I am counting in your fast start. Does that make sense? So, I'm talking about building in direct my team builder organization. So, I'm going to commit to 300. You guys text me what your goal is. If you're and, and if you're up here and you're not a team builder, text me what your goal is. But um, and here's my number. And if you're on, if you, you guys on, on WhatsApp, y'all can you know put me in WhatsApp too, of course. But text me what that number is. What are you going to bring to the table, um, you and your team? And then we're going to talk about where you need to focus your time to get there. Of course, the majority of your time is team builder group, but sometimes we can spend our time working with people that may not be ready yet, and we're going to talk about that as well. So 300 in the next 90 days outside of, uh, of you guys as team builder organizations. Team builders, I need to know what your numbers are. Those of you who are not team builder, I need to know how far you're away from team builder and when you're planning on closing that out. Because then we want to begin to talk about your next level as well. Any questions by anybody about anything? 8 p.m. tomorrow, we're going to launch the new system. Um, for those of you who are on here, I'll give you a prelude. Uh, we have a new website. Um, our website is called iconlegends.com. And this is designed to be a place that you can send your, um, send your guest. And it's a, it's a three-step system, but I'll train in depth on it tomorrow. Give you guys a bonus for being up so late. Number one, you're going to peak interest. And the peak interest question is very simple. Would and tell me something, would an extra five hundred dollars a week mean anything to you? That's it. So whether you text it and say, Hey, 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 Cindy, quick question. I'm just curious, would an extra five hundred dollars a week mean anything to you? Uh, you could put five hundred dollars with the dollar sign and the zero zero point zero zero, right? All right, thank you, Tanisha. Okay, I got somebody. Okay, so put the dollar sign five zero zero point zero zero, and then come under and say, "Quick question: With an extra five hundred dollars a week right now, mean anything to you?" So, so, um, got you, Tanisha. So, so that would be your that would be you know your your statement. Now, that's whether you call them. I suggest you call them first. If they don't answer, send them a text. Right? Call them. If they don't answer, send them a text. And then when they say, heck yeah, or absolutely say, listen, I'm on to something. I'm going to send you something, right? Um, I want you to go to this website, go to steps, you know, listen to steps one, two, and three, and then I need you to call me back and let me know your thoughts. So peak, and then you're going to send the, you're going to send the website. Listen, I'm on to something, okay? Can't explain it, but I'm going to send you a website. I need you to go up there. Listen to steps one, two, and three, and call me back and let me know your thoughts. You could do the close, the Eric Worre close. Hey, if I sent you something, it's going to take about 50 minutes to watch. Would you clear some time today to look at it? Yeah, when do you think you could look at it? I could look at it probably about six o'clock. Great. At five minutes to six, I'm going to send a website to you. Does, it, does that make sense, guys? So you're not just throwing mud up against the wall. You're, ha you're bringing some quality to it. All right, I'm going to send it to you at 6. You'll be able to watch it for sure, for sure. When can we get back on the phone? Later on this evening? And then let them let you know when is going to be a good time. Uh, now, so, so this way you can actually, and, and then, and then if the per, once the person calls back and says, man, that's, that's interesting. I like what I'm hearing. 
get them on a three-way call. So it's a three-step system. Peak, send them the webinar, get them on a three-way call. Peak, send them the webinar, get them on a three-way call. Everybody on the team can do that, right? And this is, again, this is another tool. So it's outside of, of course, we're still doing travel parties. We're still doing Zooms. But this is a good way for a new person. I mean, you could sign somebody up, like signing them up, and then say, okay, get, write down the names of 10 people we can call right now. And, and this can be done, like, right then. You know what I mean? And you could have two or three people on their team that day. So this, the, the whole goal is, is not that we're going to have a Mission 1000 with no executable strategy. We have Mission 1000 with a game plan. And we'll cover that tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. So at any rate, guys, thank you for chiming in. Again, um, uh, down in Trinidad and Tobago, I'm, I'm, I, it, I may have to have, I may add that video. So I'll do a video for you guys. Add it to the bottom of Icon Legends. And what you'll tell them to do is watch one, um, 2A and 4. So that's probably, you know, 2A and 4. But I'll make sure the Trinidad logo is so that they'll, that, you know, or the international logo is there. Uh, because, again, there's a little bit different verbiage for them. So I got to work it through my head, you know, record it, and then I'll post it on that, on that um, website. And that way, when your persons go, they don't get confused about the information. Because it's, of course, different in the U.S. and Canada. All right. Any questions, guys? Any questions whatsoever? Um, I still think you can use it. I'm, I'm just trying to debate. Y'all, it, it could be confusing. It, it could be confusing. I'll just record another one. All right, so with that, family, thank you very much for chiming in. It's after 11 o'clock. Go to, you know, get some rest. Um, anything you need, reach out to me. Text me your numbers, team builders. I've got some numbers that have already popped in. I saw them pop up on my, my watch. So let's get, let's get busy. 8 p.m. tomorrow, I need you to promote that call to your team because one of the most important group of people that need to be on this information are oftentimes not on the information. So make sure the text that I'm going to send to you, you send to them. Um, and that we, 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 we promote, don't, don't wait for my post. Promote, 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 promote. Thank you, Rhonda. You're welcome, baby girl. Promote, 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 promote yourselves um, on our pages, in our Facebook group, um, in our messenger groups, by text. Make, tell them, do not miss tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for chiming in. This particular webinar is officially over. I'll get you the playback as soon as it's done. Have a great night, guys.